Hello everyone, today I'm taking a look at the Minix Neo Z300 0DB fanless mini PC featuring the Intel N300 CPU, that's 8 efficiency cores, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, well yeah, fanless, no fans. So if that sounds good to you, then come along on this adventure. So a couple more basic specs on this guy. So here's the thing, he's got big chunk of metal heatsink on the top because he is passively cool, so there are no fans whatsoever. He's got two HDMI outs, two and a half gig ethernet, good stuff like that. Also disclosure, Minix sent me this PC for review. No money changed hands and they won't see the review until you do. So let's get on with this. So in the box, it's called the Z300 0DB fanless N300. Intel inside, I haven't seen that in a while, long time. But yeah, that's what it promises. 64 bit, that should be standard now. And some specs, if any of you guys want to look at specs. User's guide, we'll just uh, throw that out. HDMI cable. Plug adapters for the British one that they love to talk about. US and Euro plug. Power brick uses a barrel jack, so no type C abuse going on here. Specs for this guy, looks like we got 12 volt, 4 amp, 48 watt. It is UL listed, it's also CE listed. I think that covers pretty much everything. It's also got a VESA mount. This looks like it would mount on the back of a monitor. This looks like a VESA 100 mil and 75 mil pattern. Probably also a wall mount as well. And the unit itself. The Zero DB cooling system utilizes the metallic housing to dissipate heat. This surface may get hot. Uh, and I guess with this, this side we get 12 to 19 volts, USB 2, Ethernet and two HDMI's. I think this is supposed to be two and a half gig, so we'll test that. On the other side, I've got trans flash. We'll see how fast that is. Type C, USB 3, power button, and headphone jack. Back, we got the ports for the big ass antennas. Wow, do not ingest battery. This is probably like some sort of clock battery. That's a really stupid warning. And it's got all the same specs on the bottom. We've got the little windows thing here. That looks pretty nice, and Intel Core i3. So for my setup, I got the little guy here hooked up to his power brick, hooked up to a mini KVM so I can capture the output, and I'm booting Ubuntu so we can test stuff. Since this is a passively cooled system, I've decided to run a CPU stress test and see how hot it gets. So I got graphs of some of the CPU cores and the package temperature here. So currently it's at 56 degrees Celsius, which is not that bad at all for a CPU. You can see I'm running eight cores of stressing here. Now putting my hand on this thing, it is very hot to the touch. I would not want to hold it here continuously, but it seems okay for this amount of time. Um, definitely don't touch this thing. That said, the actual temperature of the cores is just fine. It's just the outside of this box is probably gonna get dangerously hot. But uh, I guess if that's a problem, it's up to you. So this graph has a time span of half an hour, so we're about 20 minutes in. We're at 66 Celsius in the package, and it's going up, but not that quickly. Okay, so 45 minutes later, I'm ending the thermal test. It stabilized at about 71 Celsius, which is perfectly fine for the CPU. However, it does mean the outside of the case is essentially like burning hot. So I can put my finger on it for a short amount of time and not burn myself, but it's definitely uncomfortable. Now, of course, this means the cooling solution is working. It's doing what it said it would. But just be careful not to touch it. It could be a bit dangerous. Now that it's cooled off a bit, let's take a look at the CPU. We have eight CPU cores and one thread per core since these are the uh, E cores. 3.8 gigahertz, pretty normal stuff. So as for PCI, we have a Thunderbolt controller. I'm not sure if that's real, I'll test that. We have a Realtek RTL 8125, two and a half gig ethernet. And we have one NVMe SSD, that is this Maxio technology Hangzhou. Also our Wi-Fi is CNVI, so that's the Intel proprietary. Now if you're using an Intel CPU, using an Intel CNVI Wi-Fi makes a lot of sense because you don't waste PCIe lanes. The N300 of course only has PCIe Gen 3 and only has a couple lanes. So using CNVI to conserve PCIe lanes is a good choice. Now I don't like Intel doing proprietary shenanigans to begin with, but that's more of an Intel thing. These guys did the best they could. On the USB side all we've got is the Intel Bluetooth. Everything else is part of my test setup. And on the block device side, all of this is snap package bullshit. Uh, SDA is my test flash drive. And NVMe ON1 
that is the 500 gig or 476.9 gig NVMe drive. The RTL 8125, by the way, is running at five giga transfers. That's PCI Gen 2 by one lane, which is exactly what the chip is capable of and perfectly fine for two and a half gig. And the SSD is running at PCIe Gen 3, 8 giga transfers by four lanes. So these guys have given you a full PCIe Gen 3 by four lanes, not skimping on lanes to the included SSD, and the included SSD supports those lanes as well. So I guess we'll see when we look inside where the other four lanes went. The N300 supports nine lanes total, and most devices try to make the best of that. So seven watts, that's pretty good. So I thought you guys might be curious about the idle power consumption. So I got this thing booted up, running Ubuntu Linux, plugged into the network and my KVM and stuff. It's open to Ubuntu desktop here, but it's not doing any work. This is just kind of sitting. And as soon as I run a stress test, it jumps right up to, oh, there we go, 24, 25 watts. So Intel claims this is a seven watt CPU, but uh, Intel being Intel, it doesn't actually consume seven watts. So 25 watts from the wall is like the peak turbo. It'll settle down at about 18 watts and kind of stay there for the rest of the time. Well, now it's cooled off a bit so we can start taking it apart. So taking a look at this, I got screws here and matching on the other side. So this panel could pull off this way or maybe it pulls off this way. On the bottom, I've also got screws that uh, sandwich these nice rubber feet and they're not even covered up, which is nice. There's also threaded inserts here where you can attach the mounting bracket. So I'm gonna go for these four guys first. The whole foot comes off, so I don't lose the foot. So I guess next up I'll take the front off. Okay, so I think we're stuck on a thermal pad here. So the top is attached with some sort of thermal compound. I don't know if you can see that. But there's also this big chunk of metal in here on the bottom. So cooling from all sides. So I should be able to just kind of tug on this. Okay, I tugged a bit hard, but yeah, there's the pad in there. There's the battery. You don't want to eat that one. So the included M.2 SSD has a heatsink on it. Included Wi-Fi there, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's hooked up to the two big antennas. And we have memory, 16 gig PC4 3200. It's only one stick, but by the way, the N300 only supports one stick, so that's what you get with an N300. It's stuck on something a little bit here. Okay, now I'm stuck on the antenna wires. But we can get a look under here. We can see in the gap there, we've got the CPU, we have a piece of metal to fill the space, and conduct heat out to the heatsink. Looks very normal. I'm not going to take it apart further because I don't want to impact the cooling performance. Okay, so what do I think about the Minix Z300 0dB? So first off, this is an Intel N300. Most of the mini PCs I've reviewed are like the N100 class, N150, N97. N300 is a bit more performant. In this case, we have eight e-cores instead of just four. Now this guy is built more in the form factor of like a mini desktop or mini something, not so much a NAS. So I didn't put a lot of effort into having a whole bunch of NVMe slots. There's just one NVMe slot in there. It's a PCI Gen 3 by four lanes, so you get basically full bandwidth, at least as much as you get with the CPU. I think it's very reasonable. We've got one 2.5 gig NIC, which again, very reasonable for this use case. I like 2.5 gig a lot. I have a big, well, it's a 10 gig switch, but I have a switch that can do 2.5 gig now, and I'm glad I'm upgrading to it. Now that said, most people probably don't need 2.5 gig unless this is like their home server, but this would of course run Proxmox just fine. It uses DDR4 sodium, so you can upgrade them. Of course, the N300 only supports one memory channel, so that's what we get, but that's the N300 limitation. Now, as of the day I'm recording this, it is listed on Amazon for $350. However, I should say that the last couple weeks have been a bit of a roller coaster in terms of pricing things. So I have no idea how representative that is of a normal price or a future price, etc. So prices could change by up to like 150%, like on the whim these days, basically. So sorry about that. But at that price, I think it's not a bad deal. It's a little bit expensive to me. Um, take it that way you will, I guess. It is passively cooled. The cooling solution does seem to be able to handle the N300 at full load just fine. 
It does get very hot to the touch, but that's what happens when you passively cool things, so just be careful about that. It has a decent amount of uh, USB I.O. So we have USB, HDMI, 2.5 gig, Type-C. The Type-C, by the way, does not do Thunderbolt, so it seems like all of the Intel N100 and 300s have that listed in their like LSPCI tree, even if they don't support it in hardware. So it's not actually Thunderbolt supporting, and they didn't advertise that either. It also comes with Windows, what is it, Windows 11. It also comes with Windows 11 Pro if you're a Windows user. I'm not a Windows user, so I don't care about that, but I'm sure that'd be helpful to a lot of people. So if you guys like the kind of videos I make on this channel, the kind of content I do, I do like home lab stuff, Proxmox, virtualization, mini PCs, low cost stuff like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that. I also have a Discord server, link down below for that, if you want to chat with me more about any of these sort of topics. I also have a Ko-fi, it's kind of like a Patreon, except it's only a one-time thing. And I really appreciate tips there as well. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.